Hi, I'm Bob Knoten. On the next three episodes of the Camp Chaos Chronicles, we're going to show you how to clean up and test these things. Fuel injectors. It's a dirty job. Someone's got to do it. Dang it. Before we get started, we're going to backtrack a little bit. If you remember in the last episode, I showed you a technique whereby I removed the brittle hoses from the hose barbs on the fuel rail and fuel injector using an exacto knife and an electric hand drill and a pliers. And that's been working great for me for years. But a Facebook friend, Paul Roper, left me a comment where he said, I've got a technique that's really easy and doesn't do any damage to the hose bar. So let's give it a try. Now this technique requires the use of one of these, a small soldering iron. No idea how many watts this is, been using it for years, one of my favorite tools. Looks like a little UFO. But at any rate, the point here is to literally put a point on the end of the soldering iron. And this particular one it's got a removable tip. I've got a point on one end and a chisel point on the other, and they're both useful for different things. What you do is you take the pointed side and you just kind of, you do what essentially we did with the drill. Just kind of put it in there down at the bottom and you need to get all the way down and get that ring all the way down to the bottom there. And once you think you've got that, go up a little bit higher into the barb you can feel it and then just kind of work your way down back to the bottom again and then go back up again now paul was a little bit sketchy on the details but this i think well actually i've done it a few times and it seems to be working the hard part of this is actually getting all the way down to the bottom and you know getting that ring of really hard material out of the bottom there and it looks like we've been successful so we're going to take this and we're going to just kind of rotate that stuff right out of there there you go just like any other technique takes a little bit of time but you know what I believe this is the new approved Camp Chaos Chronicles means of doing that job. And now to backtrack on the backtrack a little bit, what I decided to do is get a couple of fuel rails out of the shed that had been through the usual engine fire and try the different techniques on that. And you know what? In terms of the soldering iron, these things have already given all they have to give regarding application of heat to get these things off. Got one off already, and it was a combination of using the drill and the pick, and bottom line is you got to do what you got to do to get this stuff off. And uh, the pick and the pliers did most of the yeoman work. Don't be this guy. Change your fuel injection hose. We've got our fuel injectors that we're going to renovate here, or at least test to see if they're usable. Uh, all laid out here and this set right here is the one that we took off of the original engine that came on old Tex. This is out of the 1990 convertible engine that was on the test stand. This is just a bunch of odds and ends that I had laying around in this set right here, which you can see we've already started to do a little work on. Blasted those early and replaced the pedal caps. More on that later. And uh, there's 48 of these things. And I'm thinking this might take all day. First step is uh, sandblasting. And what we're going to do here is we took a piece of 516 low pressure fuel hose, stuffed a bolt in the end, which looks like it could use a little blasting on itself. And uh, we're going to use the bottom end, the pinnacle cap, to hold it while I sandblast it. And we've got, got a vacuum tap plug up at the top. Got a number of those down there ready to go. 
And um, next time you see all these, they're gonna look significantly better. Well, it took a couple hours to do, and you know, the results are pretty good, at least from an aesthetic standpoint. Everything cleaned up real good. You can see that some of them have some pits in them on the exterior of the injector body, but um, they all came out really pretty nice. There are some of these pintle caps, which are these plastic things on the end here that are cracked. I would say about a third of these are cracked. And uh, some of them were so bad that when I pulled the hose off and I was using to hold them while I was sandblasting them, they actually stayed inside of the hose. So these things really do need to be replaced. Just a quick bit of insight as to how you remove these. It could be just as simple as grabbing a hold of them with the pliers and pulling them off. Or maybe not, in which case I take a utility knife and I score it once on each side and then it just pops right off. Eventually we have to put a pintle cap on the end of, on the pintle end of the injector. Now the white ones seem to slide on fairly easily, but the black ones are, they just don't want to go. So what I do is give them a little bit of a warm up and they slide right on. They expand just enough where it's real easy to get them on at that point. You want to make sure of course that you don't burn it which I have not, so. One piddle cap installed. The next thing we're going to do is remove the filters. And there is your filter. And it looks pretty good, but it's out. We're gonna replace it. Now to get it off of here, all you do is just take a pliers, reverse the operation. That's what a filter looks like. And this is what a new filter looks like. Now, when it comes time to install the filter into the barb of the injector, set it in and then just press it lightly. You won't be able to press it in all the way. You just want it to stay in position. Now we need to protect this end right here, the pintle and the pintle cap. So I put it inside of a union nut and then it's just a simple matter of getting everything lined up in a straight line and then just squeezing it on in. Perfect. No damage. Now, if you go on YouTube, you can see a number of adapters that are used to graft a can of carburetor choke cleaner onto a piece of hose that will slide onto the barb on a fuel injector. And one of these involves the use of a valve stem off a wheel. And that looked pretty good. And being that I was in a hurry to get these things cleaned, I looked around the shop for a valve stem that wasn't actually installed in a wheel. And I came up empty. Instead of running into town to the hardware store, what I decided to do was to look around and see if I could come up with something that would do the same thing. And what I came up with is this thing right here. And everything that you see right here, I had in the brass fitting drawer in my organizers that contain all sorts of wonderful things that I don't remember what goes with what. But at any rate, I came up with this. And what this involves is a piece of fuel injector hose, which is gonna go on the barb, of course, and a 1 8 national pipe thread by 5 16 hose barb, and then a compression fitting that fits on the hose barb. And what you have to do is you have to drill it out to one eighth of an inch in order to do what I am going to do here. 
And of course, the little brass compression ferrule and the, the uh, compression nut that goes on the end of this. What we also need is some 1 8 inch oil pressure gauge line. This conducts oil from the oil gallery or some other point on the engine and brings it up to the gauge. This works perfectly. You're gonna need about six inches of that, maybe less. And you're gonna need a can of carbon choke cleaner, not because we need to do any spraying right now, but we need this thing right here. And the way this thing goes together is, first of all, we're gonna take about four inches of our 1 8 inch oil pressure line. We're going to slide this on like that, and it's a really a pretty, pretty good fit. And what we do then is we slide this through our compression nut, slide the little brass compression ferrule, slide this through the adapter, you can see that the compression ferrule gets sandwiched in between here. And then the compression fitting is going to go on like this. Doesn't matter if it sticks out of the end a little bit. You can pull it back a bit as well. But what you can do at this point is tighten this down, this compression nut, down to the adapter that'll squeeze that brass ferrule down onto the clear plastic an eighth inch line, which is then gonna seal down against the red line. And you've got all of this to play with right here. This will go on like this. And there's your funky adapter. Now how that works, we'll show you in a little bit here. This is fuel injector test rig. Mark one. Now what we've got here is our fuel injector. We've got a pigtail to attach some electricity from this battery charger that I've got here. Now the interesting thing about this battery charger is that over here, that white knob, that's a dining room dimmer switch. It's a potentiometer, 110 volt. I can turn the amount of power coming out of this thing to the injector up or down as necessary to get the thing to open. Now there's an interesting thing about this. If we go ahead and turn this thing on by pushing it in and then start turning it up, hear that? It pulses. Don't know why, don't know how, don't really care. But that's kind of what the thing does when it's actually in the car. So I'm liking this so far. So what we've got here is our adapter that we discussed in a previous clip. We got that thing pulsing. What we can do now is we can do a check on the spray pattern. If we take a look over here, I got a black piece of cardboard that we can use for contrast. And you can see that we've got a nice spray pattern. Now I've done some research on aerosol cans and I found that when they pressurize these things with propellant, they go up as high as one megapascal, which is about 143 PSI, which is more than enough for us to be able to do a leakage test. We can press on this uh, button here and we can see that, first of all, we got a leak right here. We just need to tighten that up. And, uh, but we didn't get any leakage out the end. So we know that that's good. So we can do two out of the three tests I'd really like to do, but we can't do a flow test because there's really no way of catching the fluid. Another problem is we're just taking this carburetor cleaner and blowing it up against the front of my refrigerator over there. So that's not a good thing. Plus the fact that by the end of the day, I'm gonna have a real snoot full of this stuff. Plus the fact we've got these clamps here Flammable liquid atomized in the air. Fairly large quantity of said flammable liquid in a pressurized container. You know what? I think we can do better. And this is how we're going to do it better. I made this fixture out of a two inch wide strip of 3 8 50 52 aluminum alloy. And you notice that there are four different 
stanchions that are attached to it that various things will be affixed to the fixture. One of the first things you'll notice is that we actually have a wiring harness for our fuel injector. Here's the connector that fits on the side of it. And you can see that it goes down here to this white piece of Delrin that has a couple of 1024 screws tapped into it that they attach to. And then that provides a safe place for us to attach our battery charger cables to so that we don't get any sparks during the course of this process. What you can see here is our battery charger. It's got a dimmer switch on it that we can push in and out and this turns it on and we can vary the amount of power going to our fuel injector by turning the knob and it works great for this operation. Up at the top we've got a mount that we can use to attach our fuel injector to and it is easily clamped by just turning the set screw and we don't have to be fumbling with that and we just take our wiring harness and plug it in now we have to have a mount in order to hold our can of fluid we got that right back here and it's held in place by a simple rubber band mount a couple of set screws on the side of the fixture and we're ready to go. Now up at the top here, we've got our modified adapter. This is the same thing as we used in the previous apparatus, except we put a 90 degree elbow in it for obvious reasons. And we just simply take and press this into the nozzle at the top of the can, push it down to the first barb. If you go on to the second barb, you're gonna have a hard time getting it off, which is kind of the point of the barb. And then we move this clamp down to the very bottom. And there you go. Below the fuel injector, there's some details that we should look at. And first of all, you can see right here, I've got a piece of wet or dry sandpaper that I've glued to the upright. And that is so that when we're looking at the spray pattern to determine the condition of that, we've got a little more contrast than we would with the aluminum in the back. This is something that we can use to set a container on in order to catch fluid coming out of the injector during some of the tests. And it's also shaped so that we can actually put a graduated cylinder on it and secure it so that we can actually do a flow test. And of course, down here, we've got something that we can rest that on. Let's see how this thing works. And how this thing works is pretty well, but you're gonna to have to wait till the next episode to see that because we've already blown through our desired 15 minute video length by about four minutes and counting. So if you like these videos, like, subscribe, follow us on our soon to be developed Facebook page and leave a few comments down below so that we know what we can do to do what we do better. So we'll see you the next time on the Camp Chaos Chronicles.